Bengals, the premier sports betting show with the one and only Pop DBIC, the primetime capper. And you already know who I got in the house with us, our usual Monday correspondent, my main man, the Don of Cape Cod himself, the one and only Jeff Adelson from East Coast Sports Investors. What's going on, brother? How's everything doing? I hope you're feeling good, feeling great. It's a beautiful day today out here in L.A. I hope we get, hopefully it's the same out your way back east. How's everything going? Uh, things are going pretty good, pups. The weather's been uh, not too nice to us all last week, but a little warm out there today. Uh, it's a new week, new start, new beginning. Uh, college hoops as we get closer to the conference championship week and then March Madness and uh, opening day right around the corner. All right, so pretty much um, let's go ahead and jump into it, Jeff. We got some great things going on. Is Michigan the team to beat in the month of March? <laughs> You know, uh, with Jawan there, you, you just got that feel of the Fab Five. And uh, watching them Sunday, uh, it was a hell of a matchup against Ohio State, two teams that went back and forth. Uh, I think they got what it takes. Uh, they're definitely, you know, it sounds like they'll be the number three seed currently right now. Um, they can do it all. I mean, some people were talking on social media, you know, comparing them to Baylor. I mean, offensively, they're better than I think than Baylor, but defensively, I think it's apples and oranges. But I love what Juwan has done with this team. They're, they they got it all, and uh, I like what I'm seeing, and I definitely could see a Final Four run for sure. All right, so pretty much let me go ahead and backtrack because really I was supposed to talk with you about NFL first, but I was so excited about uh, talking to you about Michigan and NCAA. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. So let's go ahead and let me retrace my steps a little bit and uh, get back to what and follow my script the way it's supposed to be because I know I caught you off guard. All right, so let's talk about it, man. Cam Newton, what is his best? Will Washington be his best fit at this time? Pops, that's a great question because there's rumblings back here, believe it or not, that there's a possibility that he comes back here and uh, they're feeling no OTAs, no camp, and a full year with the um, Patriots and now coming into a season where he could get the OTAs, he could get, get, a, get a camp, would be better than trying to bring in uh, maybe a Jimmy G who does know the system, a Jacoby Brissett who also knows the system. Um, listen, uh, I saw on social media what Cam was kind of getting goaded and uh, from one of the kids, and it, that didn't look good. Uh, I'd like to see him get a new opportunity, a lease on life. Uh, Washington's got more weapons than the Patriots do, that's for sure. So I think it would work. I, he just – I want to see the old cam. That's all. And there was flashes of it in the Seattle game this year. Uh, he had a couple other flashes, but for the most part, he just can't throw. He can't throw it downfield. He was struggling there and uh, a little wear and tear showing, but I think it might work pops. All right. Well, you know, I think that cam is a great fit for Washington right now because simply Ron Rivera. And I think they could have absolutely, gave the Bucks a run for their money if they would have had a Cam Newton playing that day because that defense reminds me of the same defense that Cam had when he went to the Super Bowl years ago. And I think that if they can go ahead and make the reunion happen, Cam doesn't have to do much but just go ahead and do the run uh run RPO that they that they think that we came accustomed to know kind of become somewhat like how the Ravens are right now. And I know that they can simplify this thing a little bit better for them in Washington than you can in um, New England because New England is really built for the quarter for the managing quarterback. The uh, I like to say the good old statue quarterback, you know what I mean? The mechanical robotic quarterback is perfect for the Patriots, but the mobile uh, moving around quarterback and, you know, making his own plays happen and everything like that, that's not something that fits very well with this team and it's actually shown up here in the, uh, uh, you know, it actually showed up last year. So I think that pretty much this would be a great fit for him and it, the division's so winnable right now too. You know what I mean? It's the most wide open division in all of football. So you bring in Cam Newton, this would be something that would be huge for your squad in my opinion. Yeah, the NFC East, like you said, uh, you know, Philly going to move to Jalen Hurts. Uh, Washington, again, uh, wide open there. Uh, we're assuming 
Dallas brings back Dak. Uh, and the Giants, again, uh, we don't know what to expect with the Giants. It is a division uh, that is uh, probably easiest to go from worst to first in. I do like the angle with the uh, reunion with Ron Rivera. Um, listen, I'm all for it. I'm a big Cam fan. You know, he's kind of one of those guys, though, when he does the Superman or he gives you the first down when you bet against him, you know, it really stings you the wrong way. But, you know, he's doable, he's likable, and I'd like to see that happen, pups. All right, all right. So we'll move on forward to our to my next assessment. Will the Raiders go ahead and jump, run after another vet here, and will they go ahead and pick up Deshaun Jackson? What are you thinking? I don't see – the reason why I think they have some youth out there on the wide. Uh, obviously they have one of the better tight ends with Waller. Uh, Deshaun uh, is just someone that just, he might give you three or four games. He's just always injured. And listen, if Philly's not going to hold on to him, I don't know why anyone else would. I mean, I think the Raiders can go in so many other directions. Uh, that's just my take on it. Unless you see another angle, uh, I'd rather give it to a younger guy that I feel that will be on the field and be able to suit up for 14 or 15 games versus bringing in, you know, the veteran like Deshaun. Well, you know why I say Deshaun is because I'm just looking at it the same way that you brought in an old Jason Wynn who came out of the booth and, you know what I mean, and didn't want to play with the Cowboys his final season. You know, he wanted to go to another team, help out a little bit. And the only team that was on, that willing to deal with him was the Raiders, and they wanted him there to be kind of an extra coach. And I would love to see Deshaun come to the Raiders and give his experiences and his uh, his knowledge to uh, young Henry Ruggs. You know what I mean? This would be because they're, they're, they're a very similar player. You know, and I think that this will be great for the Raiders on a mentorship situation to get uh, people together and make sure that folks know that it's, you know, stay healthy so you can stay on the field, things like that. It would be a great example for him to, uh, you know, kind of, you know, you know, have in place. So then maybe the effort will be a little bit better the next season coming out, coming out because you do have a good veteran there that's going to be keep pumping you up and, you know, uh, getting you right. You know what I mean? So that's why I feel like well, I could throw Deshaun out there because Deshaun was somebody that they had did have on their mind, you know, back a few years ago when he was to become available, but they wound up sending him to Tampa Bay um, instead. And then um, he went ahead and they sent him over to Washington right after that. And the Raiders were always in the mix somewhat to bring, bring him in. So I'm thinking to myself that this is quite a possibility that this can occur to where the Ra Raiders can go ahead and just bring him in here now as an old savvy vet. He had a big time touchdown late in the season in Dallas. So I think that maybe he might still have a few good plays left in him. And I think the Raiders would love to have somebody like that on their team right now. No, I, I agree. I'm a big Renfro, uh, Renfro fan. Uh, they brought in rugs. Uh, the, the funny question pops and you're closer to the situation than I am. Uh, uh, you know, the, the fact that it was car that was on the move and they were going to go in a different direction. Now I'm hearing Mariota's on the move. Uh, and listen, if I was New England, that was the guy that I wanted last year. Um, and speaking of the Raiders, I mean, I, what are you hearing? Are they keeping car and moving Mariota or vice versa? Well, Carr seems to be the man. You know, Carr. People have to understand. Carr has a good relate. Has a great relationship with Mark Davis. Okay, that's Mark Davis's guy. They go out deep with each other at least once a week. All right, so that's why people have to kind of get this idea that you know, pretty much to kind of get that idea that he's always on the you know the 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 rope. You know what I mean? Like, are we going to get rid of him this week? The offer has to be absolutely outstanding for the Raiders to get rid of Derek Carr, seriously, because we all know that there's only really like 12 quarterbacks in the league that can actually play for any team in this league right now. Derek Carr is one of them. hate to say it. You know what I mean? And regardless of what people feel and how they think about Derek Carr, Derek Carr at times can be a very cerebral quarterback. My, my main issue with him is holding on to the ball. But you know what? He's not the only quarterback that's that that has that issue holding on to the ball because the thing is he's trying to be too perfect. So what happens is is that you know you run into more sacks, things of that nature, or maybe your offensive line can be a little bit better as well too. So there's a lot of things that go into it. But from what I'm hearing, I think that they're using Mariota right now as a asset, as a piece to maybe get another piece or some more draft picks somewhat. 
because but wherever Mariota goes, he would want to be somewhere where he could po- he will be able to start. You know what I mean? And I think that Mariota could possibly be a better fit for the Patriots than Cam Newton at this point because the deceptive way he plays the game. So pretty much that's how what we have there with that. So pretty much it is what it is when it comes down to it. And I just really do feel like this could be a move that can be made by the Raiders. But if they really do want to make a good move and trying to get rid of their quarterback, Mariota, at this time, I would be on the phone with the Patriots to see what they got for me. Be honest, and you know the Patriots always love giving up their draft picks, so it is what it is. Now let's go ahead. And, <laughs> now let's go ahead and move on to our next topic in hand, and that's going to be uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Is Cliff Kingsbury on the hot seat finally? Because I think that he's been absolutely atrocious with the um, with the Cardinals the last two years. He's just been lucky enough to have Kyler Murray and to have Larry Fitzgerald. And they have a great, uh, great defense uh, uh, ends there as well too, uh, with um, Jones, uh, Chandler Jones there, and uh, also Pat Peterson, who they're going to be parting ways with uh, very shortly. You know, Pat, he won't be a Cardinal anymore. And I just truly do feel like that he's blown. Pretty much the first season was okay because you're a rookie head coach and you guys are trying to figure out, you're trying to learn some things. But the guy ahead of him was a rookie head coach as well too, and got fired. And I think even probably had a better season than he did as well, too. But they said, okay, no, we're going to stick with our guy. We're going to go move forward from here. We're going to get rid of our quarterback that we drafted the year before to make it work with the Heisman Trophy winner who, you know, pretty much was on the brink of being a baseball player. But we're going to make this thing work. So pretty much they got through the first half of the season. It was terrible his first year. Second half of the season, they were playing lights out. All of us were like, this is a possible playoff team next season. They come out this last year. They start off five and two. They're looking good. They're looking great. They're looking awesome. They're playing great on the road. You know what I mean? They're playing great defense. They're playing because the, the unders will tell you that, that, you know, they weren't giving up a lot of points in games, but they weren't scoring a lot of points either. Then we ran into December, and I told you this is December will always tell you how good your head coach really is, and he absolutely failed in the month of December. Being he had three opportunities to get this team to the playoffs and blew every single one of them. San Francisco, big loss. You know what I mean? And then at the end of the year, they don't even have golf there for the Rams. They they throw out a, 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 a you know a decent backup who does a, a decent job, and all he had to do was just do manage and help them win that game. But I know Kyler Murray was hurt. Yes, I know that. But at the end of the day, though, it seemed like they had a better backup than the Rams that day as well, too. So, you know, where is it? Where, there's There can't be too many more excuses for Cliff Kingsbury. What are your thoughts? He didn't win in college. And, and so they bring him in here and then they blow it all up. Uh, they, they get rid of that quarterback and they move all the way up and they have boom. Let's take Murray. So they got the, what they want. They got Clingsbury and they got Murray, but there was just too many holes. When you look at the makeup of that division, Pops, you got a veteran coach there with Pete Carroll. He's got Russell Wilson. You got McVay, who had Goff, now has Stafford. And now you got Shanahan, who has Jimmy G, but he, he's he got his eyes on the prize with either Rodgers or Watson. I don't see them, the Packers moving Rodgers, but I can see the 49ers going all in and making a power move for Watson. But it sounds like Watson's going to the Panthers, but that's another story. And now you got uh, Kingsbury. I, I Should he be on the hot seat? Absolutely, 1,000%. Uh, this is uh, a make or break year in my eyes. Uh, when you come in and you set precedence that this is the quarterback you want, and they go and get Murray for him, uh, and you have plenty of picks in the drafts, and it's a tough division. I, you know, with that said, I don't think Kingsbury was the the play, anyways. Uh, I'm not knocking the Murray move, but Kingsbury wasn't the play in my eyes. So, uh, if you can't win in college, how do you expect to win in the pros? I'd be shocked. Hey, unless they have an 11 and five make the playoff year, if they don't make the playoffs, I think he's gone. I agree, man. I think that they have to make the playoffs. They have to get off to a great start as well, too, because if they get off to a bad start, if I'm the front office, I want to get rid of you. Say, you know, we, we come out in first six weeks of the season, we go one and five. Bye. See you later. 
back to back to uh back to the basics. You know what I mean? Uh, we'll see you over at Houston University next season. You know what I mean? Or Houston University, SMU, wherever you want to be at, but you won't be here. You know what I mean? So that's how I'm feeling with that one right there. So pretty much Cliff Kingsbury, um, a coach that I felt that should have been fired. Him and Mike Zimmer should have been fired at the end of the year. But they have they have organizations that want to just go ahead and just stick with them. So it is what it is at the end of the day. So pretty much my next topic in hand before we go to our first break uh, with me and you, um, Aaron Rodgers. Would he be a – if you're the San Francisco 49ers, will you go all in – on Aaron Rodgers. If I couldn't get Deshaun Watson, I would rather take a swing at a younger Deshaun Watson. If it's costing me a Herschel Walker move, I would rather go that way. I mean, Rodgers, I think, is going on 37. It makes perfect sense. A Cal grad come back home. And I think Shanahan would absolutely eat this guy alive with their, you know, play action pass. Get back to old Aaron, you know, play action pass, being able to run pass, uh, roll to the right, roll to the left. Uh, I would love it. I, I really think I would, again, I'd be punching tickets till the cows come home to the for the 49ers to win the NFC West, to win the uh, NFC, and to win the Super Bowl. I think they're a quarterback away. And I, just like your Rams, the Rams – Last year, best defense without a doubt in the NFL. If they had a stable quarterback, if they had an Aaron Rodgers in L.A., there's no doubt you would have been playing in the Super Bowl. So should they go all in for Rodgers? Yes, if they can't get Watson. That's my play. But what's wrong with throwing for 13,000 yards in the last three years, though, what Goff did? <laughs> 4,600, 4, and then he threw for 39 last year. So I how just, would he do that bad? No, no, I just think if you looked at just the facial expressions and verbally what McVeigh was saying, I think he was he ran out of patience. He couldn't run the offense maybe the way that he wanted to. I mean, back when they were rolling pops, the best show on turf, uh, or we called it surf, I mean, Gurley was a big part of that, and he was able to make the deep throws. The, the, I'm not knocking Goff and his consistency. I just think... He ran out of patience. That that was my take on it, and I don't know if you agree or disagree there. Well, you know what, McVay is now, but McVay has made the move of his career. McVay, honestly, if the Stafford thing blows up, he's they're going to move on because that was a bad move. And if golf goes to, to Detroit and can switch that again, turn around that situation over there with uh, what what they feel is kind of like a lame duck coach, then there's going to be a lot of people getting fired in L.A. Because, you know, because – but I don't know. But pretty much we will have to see. I think McVay really made a ballsy move in a sense. I think it might have been a little personal as well, too, to make a move so quickly the way he did as well. But our topic in hand is Aaron Rodgers, and I want Aaron Rodgers. The reason why I brought this up is because if I was the general manager of the San Francisco 49ers, I'd much rather prefer – I'd much rather give me a Rodgers right now. I know Watson's great and everything like that, but you know what? We're forcing our hand way too hard bringing in Watson, a guy who's never been to a Super Bowl, never been to a conference championship game, none of that stuff. And you know what? He has a possibility of maybe not, maybe getting hurt, and Rodgers does as well too. But I'm just saying, Aaron Rodgers gets back to the Bay. He comes back home, and they really just need a one-year fix of somebody getting him to the championship. This will be the best defense Aaron Rodgers ever had with him if he was able to get to San Francisco. And if he's able to get a defense like this, he can breathe easy. And I think that he can help this team in the same way Tom Brady helped out the Buccaneers. So that's why I'm going ahead and saying Aaron Rodgers, it, I would have to really go all in. And I'm not going to have to give up that much for Aaron Rodgers uh, because at the end of the day, I think that the Packers are quietly – figuring out ways how they're going to move on. They're already coming up with their plans on how they're going to move on. First plan, first uh, objective of business was bringing in Jordan Love. So pretty much the 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 Aaron Rodgers experience is is really running its course. So it's about another 18 months left. Why don't you get some value out of this thing, get you two first-round draft picks out of it, a couple second or maybe third-rounder as well too, and then, you know, pretty much San Francisco can go have themselves a team that's a right-now team because they're not really in the, the business of building this team back up. And I think that's what you would have to do with if you bring in a Watson. That's just my opinion in, in hand, you know. So that's how I'm feeling. 
No, I, I I agree. And then you know, not to go back there, but I I, I think the the golf and even the Wentz the moves were also based upon the contracts. You know, I think for you and the Rams, that contract with golf was another reason they could kind of make that move uh, is to to get some cap relief. And the same thing I think with Wentz as well. Rogers, you know, signed I think for this year and next year. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked, and I agree with you. I definitely think the coach doesn't have doesn't see eye to eye with Rodgers uh, two years ago, uh, 13 and three, and then get whitewashed by the Niners. And this year, I think 13, three again and lose to the Bucks. you know, not getting to the championship. So I agree with you on that part as well. All right. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. But before we take that quick break, let's go ahead and check out 60.com. And uh, pretty much you guys can ride share app with that right there. And uh, you guys, I'm telling you, pretty cool app right there. You guys can go ahead and pull up in any town and get yourself a nice little car and everything like that. Rent, share, ride app, www.6t.com. Once again, you guys can hit the uh, show description link and get off 10% off on that as well, too. So when we get back, we're going to go ahead and talk some college basketball real quick. Our bread and butter, me and Mr. Uh, Dawson. So you guys stay tuned. This is the premier sports betting show, the primetime angles live with the one and only Pop DBIC, the Primetime Capper. The Vigit app, where social media meets sports betting. Get the latest line movements in all major sports. Track your daily bets, daily contests, the NFL over under contest that pays out 10K in cash prizes. This is a cutting edge app that helps betting be easy. Sign up with the reference code POPDBIC and you will be able to watch my daily show, The Primetime Angles, as a resource to building that bankroll. Vigit is available in your Apple or Google Store, in your iOS or Android. The social sports betting app, Vigit. From the east and the west, you've heard others, but now you've tuned into the best.